God wants you to be faithful. You know, the reason why God wants you to succeed in your future is because your success determines his success. When I understood this, I became very confident. Everybody say confident. You know, you don't need to wonder about your success if you understand that your success is good for God. God has to make sure you succeed because his reputation is on the line. Please get this point. I can stay here and then go home at this one point because this point is so important for confidence. God created you just like a manufacturer makes a product. And God made you for a reason, a purpose. In other words, every manufacturer makes a product to perform something. Then the manufacturer does something interesting. He places in that product box a manual. And that manual has in it how to operate the product, doesn't it? But the manual also has in it two things that we forget about sometimes. One, it has a warranty and then has a guarantee. Now, warranty and guarantee are really focused on the manufacturer. The manufacturer is more concerned about the warranty and the guarantee than you are. And most of us, when we open something, the little card that drops out, we throw it away, don't we? You know the little card that drops out, your stuff you buy? It says, you know, your address and everything. It says, send it back in. You don't send that back in, do you? Yeah. And that's, that's exactly why you don't have access to the manufacturer. I never used to do that until I began to appreciate how important that card is. That card is a warranty guarantee connection card. When you fill that card out and send it back to the manufacturer, you have reconnected to your source. Say la. When you send that card back, they put you in their system. See, when they send the product out, they don't know you. And when you bought the product, they didn't know you bought it. But when you send the card back, they can trace the product. Now, why do they want to trace who has the product? Because their name is on the line. If you had a bad experience with their product, you will become a bad advertiser for them. Are you following me? If your product doesn't work properly, you will tell everybody you meet that company makes bad products. So they want to know who you are. So they say, send me your address and your name. And then they will send you materials. And they will say to you, if this product does not function the way we promised, return it to us and we'll replace it free of charge. Or we will repair it free of charge. Just send it back in the box and we will play pay for it ourselves and we will repair it ourselves and send it back to you. Why? They want it to be successful in your experience. They want it to succeed. That's why they provide free parts, free service, free support because they want the product to be successful in your experience. Say amen. Am I making sense? Now, the warranty and the guarantee is really not for you. It's for the manufacturer's purpose. He wants to make sure that his product succeeds. God has done the same thing. God says, I will bless you for my name's sake. Now, namesake there is a Hebrew term which means reputation. Can I hear an amen? God already told the devil who you are. <laughs> Before you was born, God already told Satan who you are. The devil knows who you are. The Bible says you were in God before the world began. That means when the devil was in heaven, God had you on the inside of him. Satan doesn't know what God told him about you. Now, Satan don't know you, but he know what God told him you're supposed to become. The devil knows what God said you're supposed to become. And therefore, God has to make sure that you become that. That's why God loves the backslider. Because that's a product that ain't working right. That's why God loves the sinner. The sinner is a product that had some 
infections in the system. And his name is on the line. God has to make sure you succeed for his reputation because your success is tied to his success. Boy, that makes me bold and confident. That means whatever you go through, God has to make sure you come through. Can I hear an amen? You have to succeed. Now, let me tell you this. You got to believe this for it to happen. Because you might be in a situation where nothing seemed to be working. And God is saying, that's okay. Once you know that you cannot die in this situation, then you have the right attitude. Whatever you are in, you have to come out for his name's sake. Go ahead and thank him for a second. Just, just thank him by faith. I'm coming out. Praise God. I'm going to be okay for his name's sake. I was reading a story the other day. I thought I would share it, but you could bless me so much. It's called Putting the Man Together. Putting the World Together. There was a father who was sitting in his house reading, trying to study. And his little boy kept on interfering with him. And this little boy kept on coming, you know, playing with his daddy and, you know, touching his daddy and running and playing. And the father is trying to concentrate. And so the father says, let me see if I can get this little boy to settle down. I'm going to give him something to do. So the father picked up a magazine and he tore a page out of it. And it was a page of the world, the whole world. He tore it up in some pieces and gave it back to the little boy. He said, put that together. Go put that back together. So the little boy went out the room and took the papers and came back in about five minutes. And the father was shocked. This four-year-old boy, how he figured this out so fast? I mean, it's supposed to take about two hours, as far as the father's concerned. You know, he cut it up real small. And the little boy was back in five minutes. And the little boy looked at it. Daddy he says, here, Daddy. And the father looked at the, the cardboard it was on, and there was the entire world back together. And the father says, son, how did you do that? What? How did you do that? He was shocked. And the little boy laughed and giggled. He said, it was easy. He says, how was it so easy for you? I couldn't put the world back together that quickly. And the little boy says, daddy, it was easy. And then he turned the paper over, and there was a picture of a man. He says, I just put the man together. <laughs> and when I put the man together, the world came together. That's exactly what God is doing with you. He ain't trying to put the world together. He's just trying to get you together. If he can get you together, then the world will be okay. And that's what God is after. He's trying to get us to focus on what Jesus came to do. Jesus came to put you together. To give you back a reason for waking up in the morning. To show you that you were born with a purpose and a destiny and an assignment. And that you are not a biological experiment. You're not an accident of nature, of sperm and eggs. You are a concept of destiny that came to the earth. And the earth needs you so badly. That's why God gave you birth. Look at this next verse, verse 11. It says, For in him you were also chosen. Having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything to conform to the purpose of his will for your life. Boy, that's what I call confidence. God has a plan for your life. He also works out everything to conform to that purpose that he has for your life. He works out everything. How many things? Now, I know we touched on this last time, but it's important to remember this. Now, why does God make sure that everything works out to fulfill the purpose he gave you? Because his reputation. 
is on the line. Even when you mess up and make a mistake, God will turn your mistake into a miracle and put you back in the race. That's why if you ever fail in this church, keep coming to church. If you mess up, don't leave. Stay in the prayer. Why? God loves what you are involved with and he will redeem it. He will restore you back to your purpose in life. He'll make it come back. Some of the greatest people in the history of life have a bad history. But God redeemed their history. The first five books of the Bible were written by a murderer. So whenever you feel a little bad about what you've done, if you ain't killed nobody, you qualify to write the Bible. That's encouragement for me. Can I hear an amen? Your failure does not cancel your assignment. Your problems are not more powerful than your purpose. What you were born to do is more powerful than what you have done. Hallelujah. I have failed in so many ways in my life. But God is, a, is an expert in failure. He knows what to do with it. <laughs> he turns it into a testimony. Can I hear an amen? James Robertson, who you see on television all the time. I want to remind you who he is. James Robertson was a rape baby. His mother was raped. And when she conceived this child from the rape, she was encouraged by her family to have an abortion. That child was James Robertson on TV. You see every day on Life, on TBN, on INSP. That man is a product of rape. Can God redeem anything? I mean, you was born good and you ain't got nothing. He was born raped and he got everything. God takes our mess and turns it into a miracle. Don't you ever allow your shame to rob you of your fame. Hey boys, say come back to God. Say it again, come back to God. See, the key to the whole thing is you got to come back to God. Because if you come back to God, he will redeem you, forgive you, and fix you up, and turn you into a wonderful miracle. You are a blessing to the, your generation. And everybody got a story to tell, amen? Some of our stories are secret stories, but they are stories that are all the same. And God will use us to be a blessing. All right, I want you to write down what I listed here. Here are the sources of confidence. I wanted to talk about this. Uh, I call it the permanence of your purpose. In the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 28, these words you know well, but I want to remind you of them. It says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and to those who are called according to his purpose. Watch this. For those he foreknew, everybody he knew before, those he foreknew, he also predestined, everybody say predestined, to be conformed to the likeness of his son, everybody say likeness, that he might be the firstborn, everybody say firstborn, among many of his brothers. First of all, this verse classes you with Jesus. It says that you are his brother. <laughs> Uh, we don't like this verse too much. There are a number of places where this actually occurs. The book of Hebrews, it talks a lot about you and Jesus being brothers. I think the implication is you are family, not slaves. We are all sons of God as Jesus is son of God. And it says that you're supposed to be just like him. And God predestined you to conform to his likeness. Now, the word likeness here is translated in other places in the Bible as God-likeness. 
We pronounce it godliness. In other words, you were created to live and be just like God. Likeness. Oh, makes me shudder. All I want to be is a sinner saved by grace. He said, no, I want you to be just like God. Now, could you imagine God going to the zoo? That's the nightclub here that people go to, two o'clock in the morning. Imagine God, you know, would God go to a zoo and do the bump bump all night? See, it's not a matter of whether you want to go to the show or not, or whether you want to go to the club. The question is, is God like that? That's the question. See, living holy is not a matter of not doing this and not doing that. Living holy is a matter of, is that worthy of me doing? You see pigs in a pen, and you decide to go wallow with them. What do you think people think of you? Matter of fact, what do you think of yourself if you do that? You get down in the pig in the mud, the pig, and both of you all wallowing around in the ground and the mud. I mean, we, we begin to wonder about you. You hope you wonder about yourself too. In other words, there are certain things you would not do. Why? You say, that's below me. Well, sinning is below God. We shouldn't be watching one another to whether check whether we're sinning or not. That's religion. Kingdom living is there are certain things kings don't do. Say amen a little louder for me. There are certain things that royalty don't get involved with. If you are like God, God likeness, then he says he had always predestined you to be like that. Guess what? That means your destination. Is to be just like God. That's what that verse means. And that's why it says. He works out everything. To make sure that happens. No matter what you do. His goal is when he's finished. You're supposed to look just like his son Jesus. That's his goal. How do you walk into this confidence? Number one, write this down. First, you've got to have a knowledge of your purpose. Number one, you must know your purpose. You must know and discover what your gifting is. What is your gift? What is the thing that you love to do naturally? What is that thing that's on the inside? It's your gift. Uh, excuse me. Uh, and is that your business on West Bay Street, the dance place? I passed there the other day. And I just held my hand up and prayed over that, you know. And I was driving past that. She has a beautiful dance studio on West Bay Street here in Nassau, Bahamas. Now, she's a very trained technical person. She has degrees in, tech, in, in some technology. But her passion is not technology. And I, and I smile sometimes. Look, if you're a good example of somebody who has training but then has a passion. And probably have more joy in your passion than you do in your technology. She is in engineering, but her real passion is this gift. And that is what you got to discover. Because in that is your confidence. Number two, to have confidence, you must have knowledge of your potential. And this is important. Whatever you were born to do, you were built with. Your ability is determined by your responsibility. Whatever God gave you birth to do, he has invested in you. Therefore, your capability is equal to your assignment. Whatever God gave you birth to do, you carry it with you, and the ability to do it is in you. Now, that's important to have confidence. If you know that God's instruction is equal to his injection, then the instruction shouldn't frighten you. Am I making any sense to anybody? God said, look, birds, you will fly. And then God put flight in the bird. That's why birds don't attend flight school. God says, fish, you will swim. That's your purpose. And then God put the swim in the fish. So fish never go to swimming schools. They swim in schools. <laughs> Am I right? 
God says, seed, you will bring forth trees. Now, you'll never see a seed going to attend a seminar on trees. The tree is built in the seed. In other words, the ability, the potential of a thing is determined by its, this, its assignment. Once you discover your gift and your assignment, you've also discovered your ability. Number three, to have confidence in life and face the future, you must have knowledge of your resources. You must understand what you have in your hand. First, your resources include a lot of things, like your brain. Use your brain. And then use your senses. Don't be a nonsense person. God give you wisdom, use it. That's a resource. And then use your body properly. Don't abuse your body and, and put junk in it. That's a resource God gave you to fulfill your purpose. And then he gave you the resource of family. You want to use the benefits of a family to help you get to your future. And then sometime God will give you a bigger family, like a church family. And then he'll give you some mentors. These are resources. People who he put in your life to encourage you, to teach you, to train you. This is resources. You learn to use them properly. Every week we come here, I am a resource person. That's what I am. And I, I want to tell you something about resource people too. Don't expect things that are not reasonable from them. There are certain things I cannot do for you. I cannot visit you every day. I cannot come to you every time you're hurting. That's not reasonable. There's too many people for me to do that to. So if you demand that from me and I don't show up and therefore you leave because you didn't see me, you're demanding something unreasonable from the resource person. I give you the most important thing every week, which is what? The word of God. And I may, I may fail, I may, I may go, I may die, but the word of God lasts forever. I will give you what you can take with you. And that's reasonable. Resources. Resources include also what's in your house. How do you use your tape player? What kind of junk you play on it? Or do you play stuff good on that resource to help you toward your dream? Time is a resource. How do you use your time to go to your future and to build yourself up to go toward your dream? That's a resource. You must know your resources. And then number four, you must know your source. Oh, hallelujah. If you're going to have confidence in life, you've got to know where you came from. You came out of God. He is your source. And he promises to supply all that you will need according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. This is your source. Friends, this is important. Because sometimes we depend on people to get ahead. Oh, hallelujah. I say, oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I know what I'm talking about. God is your source. Whatever is coming to you is coming to you from God. Everybody say, relax. It's on the way. I know some of the things that you and I are dreaming about is taking long. But believe me, if God promised it, it's coming from God. And the reason why God don't bring it from people who you want to come from, because he don't want them to get the credit. He is your source. And sometimes God will use the most unlikely people to bless you, because he wants you to take him as the credit. Can I hear an amen? amen. He is my source. Say it for yourself. He is you are my source, God. I depend on no one but God. And that's your confidence. Your confidence is this. If he said it, he will do it. And if he promised it, he will bring it to pass. Who will? He will bring it to pass. I like what the Bible says again. It says promotion doesn't come from the east, nor from the west, nor from your friend, nor your cousin, nor the boss who likes you. But Promotion comes from above, it says. That means God will promote you in a way that he gets the credit. You ought to give God praise. Hallelujah. He is your source. And some of you are facing some conditions that are so impossible. You are afraid right now. You're saying, God, how am I going to get out of this? God has sent your senior pastor to tell you today, you coming out of this, and he's going to do it in a way that only he gets the credit. He is my source. I say God is my source. 
You got to know that to have confidence. How do you move forward when you ain't got enough finances? You better depend on God. And the Bible says he knows where the secret riches of darkness lie. There's some stuff that's hidden away just for you. Praise God. And he will bring it to you at the right moment. And you're going to know it's God because there ain't no other way he could have gotten it. You got to give him praise. He is a faithful God. It's coming, girl. He's going to bless you, sir. He's your source. Number five, very important. You must have knowledge of your value. If you're going to have confidence in facing the future, you got to know that you are valuable and worthy of that future. This is very important. you got to know your self-worth. Attitude comes from personal revelation. I cannot make you like yourself. What you need is a personal revelation about who you are. And automatically, your attitude changes toward you. Oh, I wish I had a couple more days to talk about this. I was born in the lowest part of this country called Baintown, in a street called South Street. Down there where the, the yard was dirt and the floor of the house was wood. Can any good thing come out of this place? I got a revelation about who I was. Let me tell you something. If you are a royal child and they put you in the lowest slum area of your country, you are still a royal child in the slum. Now you've turned the slum into a royal slum? Absolutely. In other words, where you are doesn't change who you are. Say it loud. Where I am doesn't change who I am. You must know your value. Because when you know your value, your confidence is, I don't need a Mercedes to be important anymore. When I drive Toyota, the to Toyota becomes a royal Toyota because I'm driving it. It doesn't make me valuable. I make it valuable. Tell the chair, you're lucky I'm sitting in you today. You got to know your value. I say you got to know your value. The job that you're on right now may not be the job you're dreaming of. That's not the job God showed you. But that's on the way there. So the value is not in the job. It's in you who hold the job. And you should say to your colleagues every day to work, you are so blessed that I'm working with you all for this short time. I give value to this company, value to this organization. I bring value to this department. And when you know your value, you don't need to be approved by other people to feel important. You hear me? You don't need no one to tell you you are valuable if you know you're valuable. Confidence comes from personal revelation of your value. Number six, very important. To be confident, you must have knowledge of your ability. You must know that you are your own raw material. Boy, that's a big statement. Please, please get this tape. If you listen to this tape seven times, you're going to have yourself a shouting experience. I'm going to say this again. You must have knowledge of your ability. I can't explain this enough. What makes me so confident? You know, I stand before 100,000 people one time. And man, it didn't bother me one bit. Why? I knew, I didn't know the people, I knew myself. No, no, I'm trying to explain it doesn't matter how big the crowd gets. It's what you know about yourself. A lady called me up the other day. She says, I saw you on TBN and you stood there without notes. And you were sitting. She said, how do you do that? I said, I know my stuff. <laughs> when I was, in, in, I was in Bermuda a few weeks ago and uh, they were using my computer, you know, with PowerPoint. And the tech guys took it up upstairs in the tech room and they were trying to fix my computer for me to use it and they messed it up something they did and the thing wouldn't work so the fella, the fella came back real nervous he said dr monroe i'm so sorry but we can't we can't get this you know oh we're so sorry and the place is packed and people are waiting sorry he says uh, how are you going to teach i smiled i said sir let me tell you something 
that computer has a hard drive and I am the hard drive. <laughs> oh, come on, shout a little bit. <laughs> Hallelujah. This stuff is downloaded in me and I transferred it to the computer. If the computer shuts down, I got the original stuff. I don't need no computer. Is anybody with me? Everybody said, know your ability. You got to know when they give you an assignment on your job or give you a tough assignment, just smile and say, I could do this. You are your own raw material. You came to earth packaged. You ought to clap right there. I tell you, I, Holy Ghost say you ought to get that piece there. You came to earth how? Packaged. You came to earth how? Packaged. Put the D on there. You came to earth how? Packaged. You came with everything you need for the rest of your life. The problem is you got to know that. You got to know that. If you know your ability, then people cannot judge you anymore. They can't tell you what you cannot do and what you cannot do and what you can't. See, it's over when you know your ability. Tell your neighbor, I'm good at what I do. I'm the best at what I do. I'm the best at what I was born to do. Now say it loud like you believe it. I am the best at what I was born to do. Praise God. I'm the best at it. That's why the birds laugh at you every day. When they fly. That's why they sing over you. They sing. Do this if you can. Do this if you can. Nah, 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 nah. They la- what? They say, listen, we're the best that would we do. God gave them what? The ability to fly. He's done the same thing for you. Number seven, very important. To be confident, you must know your uniqueness. Knowledge of your uniqueness separates you from everybody else. Oh, this is so important. Confidence comes when you know that no one could take your place. No one could really represent you. You are an original specimen and there ain't nobody like you. That makes you confident. I'm talking to myself all by myself. Ah, see, when I walk into a place, I don't care who's there. I don't care how famous they think they are. They ain't never seen this before. Oh, I'm talking to myself. When I walk in the hay, the original has just arrived. Praise God. You got to feel that way about yourself. Tell your neighbor, you don't know who you're sitting next to? Shake my hand right now. Come on, shake the hand. Praise God. You are unique. So unique. That's why you should never expect Pastor Richard to be like me. Come on, praise the Lord. And let me tell you what's dumb. Here's what's dumb. What's dumb is to try and imitate people. You can always tell when you have discovered yourself. Everybody tries to imitate you. Because you only imitate an original. Clap your hands right here. Praise God. It's the will of God. You are unique and special to God. Ain't nobody like you. Come on, shake yourself. Tell your neighbor, this is the original. 6.7 billion people and ain't nobody got your fingerprint. You ought to praise him just a couple more seconds. You are original, Christian. Ain't nobody like you. Praise God. That's why when folks refuse you, you should tell them, you don't know what you missing. Come on, somebody. Ah! You need to go tell them folks who say, hey, you know, I'm married. You tell them, now, let me tell you something. Let's start off right here. You are married this? Let me tell you right up front. You ain't never going to find this anywhere else in the world. Come on, praise the Lord. Orig- Amen, brother. Original. <laughs> Woo! You see that suit he got on? 
original. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to the Lord. Amen, brother. He knows what I'm talking about. You have to know that you are unique to have confidence. And if you want to wear mustard, you wear it. And you walk big. This is my suit. I won't wear this. Everybody say confidence. It's uniqueness. You need to know it. The most important word on this list is the word what? Knowledge. You got to know it. Otherwise, you become a victim of other people's opinions. They make you wear what they wear. Fix your hair like they're here. Make you talk like them. Make you drive what they drive. But when you are unique, you wear what you want to wear. Fix your hair the way you want to fix it. And you ride a bicycle and be happy. Because you don't want no one's opinion. I'm going to praise God all by myself. <laughs> Woo! Glory, hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, it's a privilege to sit next to me. Unique. Number eight, write it down. To be confident in your future, you must have the knowledge of your predestination. Very important. You got to know that your destination is already finished. See, when you know that it's already done, then your confidence is strong. Because you know that whatever you're going through is only temporary. You got to know that your future is God's past. You're not going to an experiment. You are going to a history. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Let me tell you a verse that you read many times, but you're going to finally understand it. Jesus was talking with his disciples one day, and he said this strange thing. He said, this command have I received from my father. He said, that if I lay my life down, I will pick it up again. Therefore, I tell you these things so that you will not be offended in me. Let me explain. That's a deep statement. He said, look, I'm going to be killed. I told you all those things. They're going to, you know, pluck out my beard. They're going to whip me. They're going to crucify me. They're going to, you know, do this stuff to me. They're going to bury me. And you are depressed. He said, look, don't be depressed. He said, look, I already got a word from my father before I came here. And the word was, if I come to earth, lay my life down, go to the grave, I will take it up again. That's a guaranteed promise before I came. I got the result before I started the process, he said. Oh, you ain't got this. No, you ain't got it. He said, look, I received a command from my father. I already got my predestination before I came. I'm already raised from the dead. He says, so dying is easy. Going to hell is easy. Going to the grave. Why? I already got the result before I started the process. That's called predestination. In other words, when he went before the trial, he was quiet because he was confident. You can be quiet when you are confident. Oh, you don't understand. See, sometimes you're making noise because you're scared. I, I, I'll finish, but I, I guess I'm, you know, you little, little ruffling up, up on your job, people tracking you. All of a sudden, you said, Now you know, no, no, no. If you know, <laughs> first of all, this job ain't what God showed you, so you know you're only there for a short time. Number two, promotion doesn't come from the left nor the right, so you know they can't promote you nor demote you. And number three, you know you're worth more than they're paying you. So, what you making noise for? Your confidence is in your predestination. I don't know what you're going through in your life, in your business, on your job. But I tell you from the word of God, it's already done. What you were born to do is already done. 
And therefore, you can have quiet confidence in the midst of tri tribulation. Because it cannot last. It cannot last. For the joy that was set before him, it says, he could endure the cross and the shame and the despising of men. Because he already saw the joy that was set before. Your predestination. Your future is already set. So walk into this year with confidence. Ladies and gentlemen, that means that the economy has no effect on you. Oh, Lord, help me to preach a little bit. I don't care what they predict. Predictions don't affect the saint. Are you with me? I ain't joking, you know. I'm serious about this. This ain't no message. This is a word from God. He says, no good thing will I withhold from my folks who walk uprightly. He says that everything will work for your good. In other words, no prediction can stop your future. It's already set. If they close your company down this year, that ain't got nothing to do with you. Because you on your way to the best thing God ever had for you. God don't get worse, he gets better. God don't get low, he gets higher. God don't get less, he gets more. You on your way to much more in 2004. He doesn't get less. Number nine, write this down. To be confident, you must have knowledge of your protection. You got to know that you are under divine edict and divine protection because it is God's best interest for you to succeed. The Bible says, <laughs> the Bible says, I will keep that which concerns you. That means whatever is your concern, he will protect it. Have confidence in his protection. He protect you from economic turn down. Some of your businesses, you think that your business is normal. I want you today to understand that if you are in the kingdom of God, you don't have a normal business. See, sometimes you go to these meetings and they talk in worldly information. You know, uh, uh, you know, insurance rates going up, you know, housing, you know, this and that. Real estate is down. And, da, da, da. and you listen to those meetings, you get the wrong yeast in your dough. <laughs> but have you ever read have you not heard that in the middle of Egypt when there was a famine it says in the houses of Israel there was no famine nor was there any hunger but there was too much in the middle of a farming. Yes, that means the house next door was broke and the house in that you was in was full of stuff because God will protect you right in the middle of chaos yes. it will happen to you in Jesus name He protects. It's my confidence. I say he protects. I want you to say this. I mean, I want you to understand this, okay? This is, this is right from the Holy Ghost. Listen to me. I hear you, Lord. The Lord says, no matter how difficult it seems right now to what you've been going through for the last couple of years and even now, he said, I'm going to tell you now that that cannot last because that is not his last word to you. I'm talking to somebody. Listen to him. He says, the reason why it's taken long is not because I am holding it back from you, but because I am preparing you for it. Oh, you ought to praise him all by yourself. Ah! Kadaburaba sata. He's working on you. Everybody say, hurry up, God. Hurry See, you know, sometimes the Lord working on you. Say, Lord, please hurry up, get it, get it over it. Fix me fast, because I'm ready for the thing. <laughs> but God is faithful, and he will do it. And sometimes you start something, and something went wrong, you know, and it ain't working the way you wanted it. And God said, no, the timing was off. 
Anybody with me? I'm talking to someone in the spirit here today. God said, look, I know what you did two years ago didn't work. And what you tried three years ago didn't work. And you tried this business or you tried that thing and didn't work. He said, it wasn't the thing that was wrong. The timing was off. But the Lord said unto me today, unto you, he said, then the time is right and the season comes. It shall reflourish. It shall come back like a resurrection. And you shall see it with your own eyes. And those that laughed at you will be made ashamed, says the Lord. I say praise him they that laughed at you shall be made ashamed because they thought you was dead but resurrection is coming and they will see it with their own eyes he will protect you number 10 you must have knowledge of your creator you know you can always tell what kind of product a product is by which company it came from (laughs) <laughs> talk to me you know when you buy a Rolex watch you don't question that watch you don't pray over that wonder whether that, that's a good watch the company gives an indication of the quality Selah. I said the company indicates the quality when you go to Kmart you don't look for Giorgio. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Huh? No. When you go to Shea Willie, you don't look for Kentucky Fried Chicken. That's a little thing there. You give me 10%. <laughs> I come to eat there today, the day, so fix my book, okay, Brother Willie. Listen. You can always tell what kind of product the product is by the creator of it. Look who created you. Your confidence should be in the fact, not in how you look now or what you wear. It that ain't that ain't. What measures your value and your quality is where you came from. And the Bible says, "And God said, let us make man." All three of God made man. (laughs) He was such an awesome product. He says, all of me going to get in on this product. You are a product of Elohim International. Adonai Universal. You came out of the heavenlies. You are quality product. Don't let no one judge you by how you look. Judge yourself by where you came from. I am a son of God. It's a product. Here's a couple of Psalms as we close. Psalm 75, 71 verse 5 says, For you have been my hope, O sovereign Lord, my confidence since my youth. From birth I have relied on you. Isaiah 32 verse 17. I love it. It says, The fruit of righteousness will be peace. Oh, I love this verse. It says, And the effect of righteousness will be quietness and confidence forever. When you are lined up correctly with God, you have quiet confidence. You ain't got to fuss and row and compete with nobody and jockey for position and trying to get promoted and fussing this one and that one robbed me and that one holding me back. Hey, go to work and be cool. Why? Your confidence is already in your predestination. They can't stop your future. You ought to shout amen. No one can stop your future. In quiet confidence is your strength forever. Look at this verse. Hebrews 10 verse 35 says what? He says, so do not throw away your confidence. This is my word to you from the Lord. It will be richly rewarded. You need to preserve, persevere rather, so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. For he promised you a future. He said, don't throw off your confidence now. Maintain your cool and calm and quietness, knowing that no one can stop what he already finished. You leave this, let this be the week of quiet confidence. Walk into your future with such unique quietness and confidence, they will think that you are arrogant. Oh boy. Let me just say it again. Whenever insecurity meets confidence, it calls it arrogance. 
And there are people who would say to me, I'm an arrogant person. There have been people who used to come here that tell me I'm arrogant. I don't know what they're talking about. I'm having such a good time enjoying myself. I don't even know what they're talking about. I am so confident in what God has revealed to me about me that your opinion don't touch me. Now, if you are insecure, that could be a problem for you. There are some folks who don't like how confident you are. You can't deny yourself. You can't deny who you are, is what I'm saying. You know who you are. That's why Jesus Christ was so cool all the time, all the time. No, he was always cool all the time. One time they called him the devil. They said, you are Beelzebub. Beelzebub means Lord of Flies. Flies refers to demons and Lord means ruler. You are the ruler of all demons. You are full of Beelzebub. You are the devil yourself. And Jesus was so cool. He said, you can say whatever you wish about the son of man. <laughs> oh, y'all didn't get it. You can say whatever you wish about the son of man. But I know who I am. I know where I came from, he says. Quietness is a sign of confidence. When you get all hot under the ears and all hot heated when someone talks to you, that means you ain't got no confidence, man. Someone called you dog, you smile. You go, now that's an ignorant person. You don't argue, argue and answer ignorance. <laughs> the woman called Jesus, you know, you old Jew, we don't talk. Jesus says, if you knew who it was that was speaking to you. In other words, lady, I won't even argue with you because you don't know who's talking to you. Tell your neighbor, if you knew who I really was, you would take me to Shea Willie right now. Clap your hands, all ye people. Take them out, take them out for lunch. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Boy, Shay Willie, you got 20% now. <laughs> All over television. Praise God. All right, listen to me. Listen, do you understand why I keep telling you say that over the years? Some of y'all gotta get it. That's not a cliche. I mean that. If you knew who I really was. You would give me a hundred dollar lunch today. Say it. Tell your neighbor. <laughs> hey, look, some of you are trying to believe it. Trying to believe it. Trying to believe it. Don't throw away your confidence. It works. God bless you, son. Now, you better say it fast. You all better talk. I get mine straight. Amen. Praise the Lord. I got lunch today. Glory to Jesus. Amen. All right. Final scriptures here. Write down quick, please. The kingdom has established your future. The kingdom is committed to your future. The kingdom provides for your future. The kingdom protects your future. The kingdom works for your future. And the kingdom plans for your future. This is exactly what the kingdom does. Buy the tape. It's important to understand this. Because the kingdom of God is what this is all about. You are in his government. And he protects your future. He takes care of everything. That's what you do with ambassadors. You take care of their whole future. You pay for everything. And all ambassadors are paid for by the government. Your future is secure in the hands of the government. This year shall be the year of the death of worry in your life. Job 8 verse 7 says, Your beginnings will seem humble. So prosperous will be your future. What a verse. You ought to write that down in big letters. Your beginnings will seem humble. 
so prosperous will your future be. You will be born in Baintown, but you will be on TV and all over the world. You know, Ken, I was thinking about you, but Ken, Ken, wave at me, Ken. You know, Ken, I was thinking about Ken the other day, I was praying for you and your wife. Because, man, I hear them playing your music on the radio all the time now. You know, they, they finally get in revelation. And you and I had talked about this, you know, privately. We prayed in my office. We talked about it for a while. How, you know, uh, this man has a gift. And he said, Pastor Miles, I want you to listen to these songs. These songs came from all from your teaching. He said, but I don't know if they're going to play it. I said, look, your job is not to get involved in that. Your job is to do it. And then let's pray. Because God's going to open the door they can't shut. I heard his music three times this morning. On a Sunday morning. Telling the folks, don't drink liquor. That's a good song, man. Give a lot of hand for this man of God. Praise God. Don't drink liquor. But you ask him where he started, eh? Started with gang families and running around the streets. Hoodlums. And now his voice is being heard by thousands of people. Humble will be your beginnings. The last part says what? But prosperous shall be your future. Tell your neighbor, I'm on my way to a big one. Tell somebody else, I'm on my way to something big. Tell your neighbor, don't, don't judge me now. Wait till I'm finished. You ought to praise him for that. I tell you, he said, don't judge me now. Praise God. On my way to a finish. Psalm 37 verse 37 says, consider the blameless, observe the upright. There is a future for the man of peace. But all sinners will be destroyed. There's a future for the man of peace. Quiet confidence. The future of the wicked will be cut off. That's why you shouldn't be wicked. That's right. You destroy your own future. Live right, young people. Live right, old people. Stop shacking up. Stop sneaking around the night. Stop doing dumb things. You're messing with your future. You are dabbling with your future. You protect your future by living righteously. Don't experiment with your deposit. So important to live right. Very important. My challenge to you this year is to have the courage that you need. Courage is resistance to fear. Courage is the mastery of fear. Not the absence of it. As you move forward this year. You may be afraid at times. But master that fear. I found out something about courage. It cannot exist without fear. Fear is a product of courage. Or rather courage is a product of fear. So when you are afraid. It gives birth to courage. Whenever you are going to obey God, expect to be afraid. Because God's assignment always frightens you. But it brings courage to your life. Trust your hope, not your fears. Believe what God told you. More than what you see with your eyes. So important. Trust your hope, not your fears. Your hope will protect you from your fears. The great statement made by President Roosevelt years ago. And Vincent Churchill also said this during World War II. He said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Don't be afraid of the future. Have confidence. Go forward this year. 2004 is the most unique year in your life. I feel some stuff in my belly about this, con this year. There's something in this year that's going to bless you so much, you're going to be shocked. God is going to take you to a four, a five-year leap in this one 2004. It's going to be the best year you ever had. I feel it. Mine already started. Things that you've been held up on for years shall come to pass this year. What then shall we say in response to the problems? 
If God be for us, then who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him give us graciously all things to enjoy? Who shall therefore separate us from the love of God this year? Shall it be hardship? Persecution? Farming? Nakedness? Danger of being hurt? Nothing shall separate you from the love of God. It says, no, in all these things we are what? Read it aloud with me. No. Come on, say it. No. In all these things. Come on, out loud. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor things present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor debt, nor anything else in all creation will be able to tear me away from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, who is our owner. You ought to give him praise. Amen. Commit your way to the Lord, and he will therefore direct your path, and your plans will what? Succeed. In his heart, a man plans his way, but the Lord determines the steps of that plan. May he give you the desires of your heart and make all your plans to succeed. Oh, I love this one. It says, delight yourself in the Lord, for he will give you the desires he put inside your heart. What a God we serve. Very important. He says, you commit yourself. Trust in me. Follow my word and delight yourself and I will take you to your future. I love it. Here's a challenge. Say it out loud with me. Only those who dare to fail greatly can ever achieve greatly. There's your challenge. Be willing to make a big fool of yourself. And you'll become great. Do not fear the future. Fear the fear of the future. I say to you, do not do the thing you fear and be afraid of it. Do it. When you do the thing you fear, the death of fear is certain. Don't be afraid of what you fear. God says, start building your house this year. You don't know how you're going to finish that house. Start it. I say, start the house. Go to the bank, whatever you want to go to, you know, go get the property, tell the, tell the bulldozer, come dig the hole, you know, start, start cutting the foundation. Fear is as powerful as you fear it. Start your own company. Open your own firm this year. Put your name on it, Monroe and Monroe. I'm talking to somebody. See, what you afraid of? If you start doing it, the fear of it will die. Write this down. Have faith in the God of your future. That's how you win. Go to your future. May the Lord have mercy on all of us. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord cause his favor to rest upon every one of you here today and watching us at home. And may everything you touch this year prosper. And may the future that he promised you come to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. Close your Bible. Let's go home. I repeat, it's not what you are that holds you back. It's what you think that you are not. That's what holds you back. Number two, you cannot always control circumstances.